Hello. I'm Tom A. As Patty already mentioned to you, EcoEquity is part of an international coalition. We're working very closely with the Stockholm Environment Institute, with Christian Aid, with Oxfam, with the Heinrich Boll Foundation in Germany to develop a fair global climate accord that is capable of supporting an emergency mobilization in the face of climate emergency. Climate emergency is what we are about. And so the first thing I want to say is that I'm not going to say much about the climate emergency, though this is indeed the right word. And, um, and so the, 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 the thing, the introductory comment I want to make is that I use the word with trepidation because I have noticed that as the science marches on, most of my friends even aren't keeping up as if they couldn't handle it anymore, right? And, and I, I think that it's worth stating the bald truth of the situation is that people really don't think we're going to be able to get our arms around this problem. Um, so that's what we're about. What would you actually have to do if you were serious? Um, if you wanted to rise to the occasion? And so I'm going to show you basically one slide, though there's a second slide that's, that's snuck in. But the first point I want to make before showing you this slide is that it is still physically possible to stabilize the climate system. I want to emphasize this point. That is to say, it is me we have the money to do it. We have the science and technology to do it. It is merely a political problem. Okay. Now, having, having said that, I, I'm going to take you through a thought experiment because we're not going to be able to deal with the problem unless we understand its nature. This, so, so here is a thought experiment. Now you can see that there's three, three uh, curves up there. The first curve is the two degree centigrade emergency pathway. This is actually what we have to do at the level of global emissions if we want to have a reasonable chance of, of, for example, avoiding the loss of the Greenland ice soon. Um, it's, I'm not going to say much about it except to say that it correlates to 80% reductions, physical reductions, globally by 2050. And that would leave us with still a 20 to 35% chan chance of overshooting 2 degrees centigrade. You would not get on a plane that had a 20 to 35% chance of crashing, right? And 2 degrees is probably unsafe anyway. If you look at Jim Hansen's recent work, it's way too high. But this nevertheless is an is a, is a, a adequate conceptual marker for the emergency trajectory. It's not actually emergency enough. Now, the green line, oh, I forgot, to, I forgot to say that this slide, take this slide, understand this slide as a combination of science, conjecture, and arithmetic, okay? The blue line, the two degree emergency pathway is the science, okay? The green line is the conjecture, okay? Now, what it, what it imagines is that the most aggressive, most, you know, ambitious proposals that have seriously been made about what should happen in the wealthy regions of the world actually happen. This is Gore's proposal, but implemented without offsets. It is. It could potentially be implemented with cap and trade, but they would. Ha it would have to. Re re those those transactions would would have to devolve to real reductions, not fake reductions of the type that Patty was talking about. Um, and 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 this is not just the United States. This is all of what in the Kyoto Protocol language is called Annex One. So let's imagine that we pull it off. Okay. Here comes the arithmetic. That's what's left for the South. And it's as simple as that and as complicated as that. The purple sh line shows by subtraction how much of the limited remaining global carbon budget would be available for the use of the South. And it's not much. 
In such a future as this, I mean, the South, look, look, at, look at the year when global emissions have to peak. It's before 2020. And, and the real problem, and the South's emissions also have to peak before 2020, and the real problem is that this has to happen, the real problem is that this has to happen while on average the people of the South are still poor. And this, believe it or not, is the core of the climate problem. There are still two billion people without access to clean cooking fuels, one and a half billion without access to electricity, one billion with inadequate access to fresh water, almost a billion who are chronically undernourished. And I would guess that that number is increasing now with the crisis in food commodity prices. And in other words, and, and, the, and the thing is, the thing is that under the current re global regime, solving any of those problems means an increase in per capita carbon emissions. So the question is, what kind of a climate regime can allow uh, this to happen? That is the question. And, and on, on the screen you see one possible answer to it. This is the, the best thing that Al Gore ever said, as far as I'm concerned. And what I just want to say to you is that it's even worse than this. I, I know I'm out of time. It, it's even worse than this because not only do we have to put a climate regime into place in which we quote unquote operationalize the, the, the ability and responsibility problems that Gore is talking about in this, in this quote, but we have to do it in a world that is not only divided between the North and the South, but in which a world in which both the North and the South are divided internally between the rich and the poor. And that's the problem we have to solve, and we have about a week to solve it, and, um, and I can't really say anything else. I'm not optimistic enough to say I could, you know, to, to attempt to explain this in five seconds, but I will say that, that uh, the report that was published at Bali and which is being revised for the next intercessional is on the tables. It's called The Right to Development in a Climate-Constrained World, and take a look at it.